Hey guys, Andrew Marsh here with DrewFit.com. I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about surviving in a 5G world. And a lot of this information I'm going to be talking about is based on my own opinion of what we've seen with 3G and 4G. And uh, what we're expecting with 5G is going to be a lot worse, so I think it's best to be proactive. And let me give you a brief overview. Right now with 3G and 4G, the main issue is that we are getting radiated um, pretty bad with these cell phone towers and right now they're at a 3 gigahertz frequency and when 5G goes live they're expecting it to go upwards to 24 gigahertz all the way up to 100 gigahertz so that's 8 times to 33 times depending on what area you live I would imagine if it's a more dense population they're really gonna crank it up but that's just my my guess um, and like I said 5G hasn't gone live yet so we don't know what to expect. Um, some people are, are gonna say doctors aren't even gonna know what's going on because some of the issues that people have are, aren't gonna have any answers to some of the lab tests that are gonna be done, um, which is pretty dang scary. And like I said, it's best to be proactive. And I'm gonna touch on three topics that could potentially help you out. So let me jump right into it. Number one, you're gonna wanna increase and maintain a high redox potential. Now, for those of you that don't know what redox means, it's basically a reduction of oxidation at a cellular level and uh, increasing your uh, gain of electrons in your body. Now, if you know the human body at a cellular level, you know that when your cells become oxidized, that leaves you susceptible for certain diseases and cancers, so not good things. Um, there, but the way we can uh, increase redox potential, there's a few ways to do it. Um, getting uh, out in the sun and increasing your sun exposure is huge. Um, contrary to popular belief, um, I think the sun is probably one of the most healing uh, things that we have available to us, and the best thing is it's free. Um, it's better than any supplement. I'll put the sun up against any supplement any day of the week, and. Uh, now I'm not gonna just go tell you to hop out in the sun for eight hours if you aren't used to being out in the sun. What you wanna do is slowly work up a solar callus and increase your tolerance to the sun um, so you can be out there for uh, hours at a time. Me personally right now since I work outside, I can uh, stay out there all day long, eight hours, have no issues. And uh, actually I feel better than I've ever felt before. I'm sleeping better, I have more natural energy, enhanced mood, and the list goes on and on. And that's uh, one way to increase redox potential. And another thing is grounding. Uh, taking your shoes off and uh, getting out in Mother Nature and uh, you, you emit more of uh, the Earth's electrons that way and that's the best possible way to increase electrons in the body. And uh, the surfaces that you can do this on are gonna be concrete, grass, uh, maybe you're hiking a trail in the mountains. My personal favorite is getting out in the ocean, on the beach, in the sand and just staying out there all day long. And uh, what I wanna talk about with redox potential, essentially, you'll know you have a good redox potential if your cells are very resilient. And uh, there's no way to really explain how it feels, but um, I believe it was Dr. Jack Cruz was saying, Usain Bolt in the 2008 Beijing Olympics was eating, uh, it was a very popular story, he was eating McDonald's because that was the only food that he was familiar with and it had no implications. He actually broke the world record on eating McDonald's out there. And he found that basically that's because he has a high redox potential. His cells were resilient and eating foods like that really didn't cause him any issues at all. So that's an awesome thing. And one reason why I believe Usain Bolt has a high redox potential, um, he does track and field. He's outside training all day in the sun. And another thing, he is near the equator um, in Jamaica, so his latitude, I'm not sure, but I'll guess it's at about a four latitude, which is pretty dang close to the equator. And that's, if you, if you notice, when you go travel near the equator, you notice that you just, just, just start to feel better. And uh, I, I'm a firm believer that it's because you're, you're getting so much more quality sunlight as compared to if you're at a northern or southern latitude. Um, but next thing you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to is avoiding blue light. Now, I've touched on this a little bit in a previous video, and uh, what blue light is basically, um, it's the lights that they use in LEDs, fluorescence, 
um, cell phone screens, tablets, computer monitors, um, and so on and so forth. And I, I'd say basically 100% of the population is blue light toxic, um, simply because it, it's in our house. Um, unless you live outside off the grid, you're probably getting blue light toxicity. And there are ways to mitigate this. Um, if you're really in high blue light areas, you're gonna wanna cover up your skin because believe it or not, your skin does absorb the light that it um, is surrounded by. And uh, being constantly surrounded by blue light is not a good thing. And another thing, you're gonna wanna wear protective eyewear, blue light blocking glasses um, whenever you're inside, in my opinion. Some people only recommend them at nighttime, but I personally recommend them all day long when you're inside. If you're outside, take them off, take your contacts, take your prescriptions off, sunglasses, take all of those off and uh, feel free to absorb the sun's beneficial rays. Um, another thing I'm not gonna get too in depth on, um, but you're gonna wanna research deuterium depleted foods and water. And what this, what uh, my basic understanding of it is, for deuterium depleted water, that means you're taking out a hydrogen atom of the water and emitting more oxygen, so you get more oxygen to the cells. Um, I'm not gonna try to get too in depth and sound smarter than I actually am on the topic. I'm actually gonna do more research on it because it's pretty fascinating. But that's one reason why I would recommend spring water is because the ice that is left behind once the water leaves the ice, that is deuterium on the top of a mountain, apparently. And you can actually do this. I do this with my distilled water. I place my distilled water gallon in the freezer, let it freeze for about three hours until it's mostly liquid, but there still is ice. I chop off the ice, pour it in, and uh, pour the water in and leave the ice in there. And apparently that's all the deuterium. And I haven't noticed anything major yet since I just started doing it a few weeks ago. But uh, from my research on it, I'm finding that uh, it's pretty good to have deuterium depleted foods uh, or foods that deplete you of deuterium, I should say. Um, but let me just jump into the next one. Number two, this plays into increasing your redox potential, and that's avoiding dense population. Now this, I'm gonna leave up to you guys, um, simply because it's a question of how healthy do you want to be, really? Because um, if you live in a city that is overly populated, Los Angeles, New York, um, Denver's getting that way, Austin, Texas, San Diego, Chicago, so on and so forth, um, that just means that there's uh, gonna be major non-native electromagnetic field toxicity um, because so many people are gonna be on their cell phones. There's gonna be so many Wi-Fi routers. Um, there's gonna be more cell phone towers in that area so everybody has cell phone service because it's so important, right? Um, but simply put, if you live in a dense population in the United States, chances are there's gonna be uh, major electromagnetic fields in the area. And like I said, it's a question of how healthy do you want to be. Um, me personally, that's my number one priority. So I would avoid living in apartment complexes where there's thousands of people surrounded by me. Um, I wouldn't live in downtown areas, not a chance. Um, personally, I would like to live on a beach somewhere in a remote island uh, eventually, but like I said, it's a question of how healthy do you want to be. If your health doesn't mean that much to you, then don't take this into consideration. Stay where you're at. And uh, if your health begins to uh, deteriorate, you're going to want to take action. But again, that is personal choice. Um, let me move on to the third one. And that's going to be nourishing mitochondria. Now, what mitochondria is, it's responsible for uh, producing cellu cellular energy, which is called ATP. And it's also responsible for protecting your DNA. And if you know anything about the uh, 3G and 4G towers and what's expected of the 5G, is that it's literally gonna mutate your uh, cells, um, which is pretty dang scary because that means your mitochondria is dying, the energy powerhouse of the cell is dying. And uh, the way you do uh, take care of your mitochondria, there's a few ways to do it. You, like I said, increase your sun exposure, um, cold thermogenesis, which has a mitochondria uh, uncoupling effect and it helps burn fat, body fat. Um, and I've been doing it for probably, I wanna say it's 2018, six years. I'm taking ice cold showers, um, taking ice baths, 
My brother actually just got a uh, deep freeze and filled that up with water and does cold thermogenesis that way and he has uh, tons of benefits that he's had from it. Feels amazing. And uh, another thing, your diet, you're gonna wanna implement a ketosis diet in my opinion. Increasing your fats, your good fats, omega-3, 6, and 9 have a perfect balance ratio, as well as implementing intermittent fasting. Um, me, personally, I fast. I eat. I allow myself a time period to eat from noon to 6 p.m. No food after 6 and no food up till noon the next day. Um, and th this is really good at uh, rebuilding mitochondria because it puts your body in a state of autophagy. And what autophagy is, is a basically a recycling of your cells. Um, so you're taking out the bad and rebuilding the new. So that's, that's what you want to uh, nourish your mitochondria. And again, or not again, but one major component you're going to want to uh, take into effect is getting good quality sleep. Um, I think that's maybe the most important part. Um, if you're not sleeping, simply your body is not recovering at all. And uh, the way you uh, increase your uh, quality of sleep, get out into the sun. Me, what I've been doing uh, the last four months, five months now, is getting out in the sun right when the sun is rising and gaze around the sun. And apparently in doing so, I think it's the UV, ultraviolet and infrared lights are uh, so powerful in the AM when the sun's rising that it actually helps create melatonin. So at nighttime, you can literally just put yourself to sleep in a deep sleep. And I'm sleeping like a baby every night and I don't take it for granted, but um, that's one way to uh, increase the quality of your sleep. Another thing is sauna therapy. Um, the sauna has great um, benefits for detoxing and uh, really increasing uh, hormones, human growth hormone within the body, and, and you have increased in human growth hormone, you're gonna have much better mitochondria. And there's a lot more benefits that come with sauna therapy I'm not gonna get into, I'll save for another video. But overall, <clears throat> in surviving in a 5G world, I'd highly take all three of these things into accountability. And when we get closer to 5G, I think there's gonna be more things that we're gonna have to pay attention to. And that's, that's what makes the journey fun. Um, so I may be missing some uh, very important pieces right now, but that'll uh, only time will tell that. So I wanna thank you guys for watching. And if you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel, um, I would appreciate it and share this video to somebody that could help. Thank you very much for watching.